G'day guys, it's Stas here. You've caught me in the middle of a COVID lockdown. Yep, not the old big C, but you know, the show must go on and we're gonna to talk today about distillation. So last video, we left with having how to make a molasses wash now. Albeit with the, uh, the way that I made it in the video, made a couple of mistakes. We ended up making a lot more than we needed. Um, so uh, at the end of fermentation, uh, which I had to dial it down and deal with everything, uh, we need to then proceed on to distillation. Now, just a disclaimer here, uh, in many places around the world, distillation is illegal to do without a license. So just be aware of any potential ramifications and restrictions based on your area. So having got that legal part out of the way, uh, let's talk about what distillation is. So distillation is simply the process of separating various uh, things within a solution, various compounds or elements in a solution based on their different boiling points. A uh, common misconception is that distillation creates alcohol. Uh, if you remember back to, well, brewing any beer or fermenting anything at home, it's actually the yeast that create the alcohol, um, not the still. The still simply removes impurities uh, and separates uh, water and flavour compounds into, into parts, allowing the distiller to separate them and recombine them after distillation. So just remember that. In the previous video, I talked about uh, doing a stripping run and a distillation run. So let's talk about those two processes uh, and what they mean. So a stripping run, what you need to do is fill your boiler or still with um, the molasses, fermented molasses wash. Make sure it's degassed. Um, you can do this by pouring it from a great height or from a height and or, and or vigorously stirring it. You'll see the bubbles degas. You don't want to uh, have the gas in there because it can lead to puking. Speaking of puking, it's a good idea to not fill the still uh, more than about two thirds, maybe three quarters full. You want to allow some space just to prevent against puking, just like you would if you're doing an all grain uh, brew. We might all be familiar with a hot break when you come up to the boil and all the proteins from the wort uh, start coming to the surface and because there's a high surface tension, uh, it can boil over and cause a hell of a mess. Now, with a still, you could use um, a distilling conditioner or an anti-foam, I'll put a link up here, um, just to break the surface tension and to limit the, the amount of puking. What is puking? Uh, it's when uh, the wash foams up because it's being heated and air and, and gas is trying to escape and it, it forms up like a bubbly cap on the top of the boiler, which sort of rises up because all this uh, air is trying to uh, get out from the solution and it pushes this cap up into the still and causes cloudy distillate and can cause a real mess. It can, and in extreme cases, if it causes a blockage, you can, of course, uh, have a big problem on your hand because you've got a pressure cooker and if the pressure continues to build up, nasty things are gonna happen, like explosions and stuff. <laughs> so, with a stripping run, the distiller's not really interested in making cuts uh, or choosing what parts of the spirit to keep and which parts to discard. You're basically wanting to concentrate the, fl the flavour compounds and the ethanol um, and remove a lot of the water to separate it from the water. So you'll go from usually uh, a wash will be between 8 and 12%. Um, that will then, you'll remove the water and be left with probably about a quarter of the volume with about, you know, four times as much alcohol. So if you have, let's say, let's use some numbers, 20%, uh, 20 litres of 10% alcohol wash might turn into something like four to five litres of 30 to 40%. Uh, alcohol and that's called low wines at this stage and with regards to running the still you're not really interested in making flavor cuts um, or running it at a particular speed generally the consensus is with a stripping run 
the distiller just is interested in processing uh, as much of the wash into low wines as possible. So uh, the distiller usually runs at this. Uh, with as much power as the condenser can handle, and so it's hard and fast is, is how it's run for stripping runs. So that's your first distillation done. On to second distillation, which is referred to as the spirit run. So the distiller in a spirit run is a much more attentive process. Something that is definitely important in a spirit run is the concept of making cuts. Now, in any spirit, the, the totality of the low wines will have three and a half <laughs> main sections. And these come off uh, in different, at different times. The order that they come off is based on the the, the boiling point of those particular compounds, um, the, the lighter, uh, more volatile compounds uh, will turn into a, a gas or a vapour at a lower temperature as the whole uh, low wines come up to temperature. They will be the first to pass through the still. And then the, the heavier, uh, less volatile uh, ones will come off later. And so that, that's the general idea of how it works. So the most volatile um, portion uh, is what's known as the four shots. Now the four shots will often contain things like methanol and other really nasty things, which if you drink them in a uh, large concentration, i.e. after it's been distilled, it's going to give you a nasty hangover at best and is generally uh, referred to as four shots. Uh, they are not kept, they are destroyed um, because they're no good, they serve no purpose. The next section of the run to come through is referred to as heads. Now, depending on uh, the beverage that you're making, um, the flavour and the aroma of heads, it can be uh, a little bit different. Generally though, uh, the, the heads will have a, uh, like a floral or a, um, a potpourri kind of smell to them. They can often smell a little bit sweet. Uh, on the tongue, they will uh, be a, a bit hot, an alcoholic burn, and a little bit uh, prickly around the lips and the tongue. So depending on the drink that you're trying to make, Sometimes a little bit of heads can be really nice in the final mix, and other times you want to just sort of kick that out in the final mix. But the distiller can run that through and reclaim the alcohol in something else like a vodka, something like that. The next and most important section of most um, alcoholic distillation it is referred to the hearts. This is the most neutral, the most smooth, and the highest concentration of ethanol um, uh, in, the, in the product. This will, by volume, it should account for the majority of the, the volume of distillation. And last but not least uh, comes the tails. And that can have a bit of a, a funky wet cardboard, sometimes referred to as wet dog or wet cement. Um, uh, smell and uh, a flavour is a, can get a little bit oily and just a, not particularly pleasant um, and it's the job of the distiller to make those, uh, to identify the points at which those different fractions uh, are coming through the still. <laughs> now it wouldn't be such a difficult job if the whole volume of the low wines were to come through the still like a, let's say like a snake and you go oh yeah that's the four shots that's the start of the heads that's the start of the, t uh, the hearts and that's the start of the tails and it's done we just want the hearts it doesn't necessarily happen like that in real life uh, and depending on how the distiller runs the still um, you can get what's called smearing. For example, if the distiller runs the spirit run with too much power in the boiler, what can happen is the vapours are coming up at such a speed that they're intermixing with each other um, as they're coming out of the condenser 
and you get a little bit of the heads in the hearts, a little bit of the hearts and the tails, sometimes even a little bit of tails in the heads, and so you get less clean distinctions between the fractions coming off the still. To combat that, a distiller will often adjust the amount of power in going into the boiler to uh, give the, the low wines coming through the still a chance to sort of uh, separate out and have a, a, a more obvious cut point um, in the spirit run. Speaking of cuts, you might be thinking, how does a distiller make cuts? Well, an experienced distiller can make cuts on the fly, but a, a less experienced distiller uh, will often uh, make their cuts into jars. Now, it might seem a little bit of a, a little bit of a faff, but what this allows the distiller to do is to uh, make cuts at one point in time and then come back and revise those cuts and check that they're making cuts at the right point without the pressure of having the still run and product continuously coming out of the spout and uh, having to, to make those things on the fly. I've set up an example for you just so you can see what it might look like if you were to distill uh, using jars. Uh, so you can see the jars labeled one through uh, 15 and I'll put a little graphic over it to show you roughly where you would expect um, the, the different fractions to be. It can be handy for the distiller to make notes as they're taking their cuts into jars so they can go back after the run has been completed and check their notes where, against where they think the cut should be. It's a really great opportunity for the distiller to sort of check their work, if you will. If you want to know more about making cuts, there's a really awesome video that Stillet did on his channel. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, he does a really great job. Uh, so if you want to know more, check out his channel down there. So at the end of those cuts, now comes the job of creating a blend of what is left from the spirit run. So this is really up to the, the distiller. They need to go through and assess each cut's jar and have a picture about what they're trying to make in the final spirit and blend together the cuts that they want uh, into a final uh, vessel for storage uh, and ageing. So I hope that's given you a bit of an understanding about what happens during a stripping run and a spirit run. And if, like I said, if you want to know more about making cuts, Go check out the video from Stiller's channel. Uh, some really great content on there if, if you want to know more about distilling. So hopefully you've got something out of this video. Uh, leave a comment below if you've got any questions or if you just uh, learned something and enjoyed it, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe because next month we're going to be putting some spices into a run. Cheers, guys.